I was informed by some of our noble followers on the video we uploaded tagged, God will turn your situations around, and I gave 12 biblical passages for help, that the voice ceased at 6 minutes 14 seconds, which when we checked, it was true, so I promised of re-uploading it again with the voice note. The main reason why I choose to re-upload this video is because I believe that this video is going to be of great help to many people. I say this based on the things that happened while I was making that video. The devil fought very hard to ensure that that video was never uploaded. When I finished making that video, I uploaded it three times. The first time, it refused to be uploaded. I did again and another issue came up. And the third one, the place where the main points were spoke, became blank. So I knew that the devil doesn't want that information passed across to you. And the reason for that is because the devil knows that the weakness of the Christians is lack of knowledge. So when he knows that a dimension of knowledge is about to be unveiled to the people which would be of great help to them, he the devil will fight it with all of his strength. So having come to this understanding, I have decided to redo that video and upload it again, no matter the cost and the fight from the devil. So as you listen, may you be blessed and ensure that you use every knowledge that is passed across to you through this video. I believe it's for your help in times of need. Like I say earlier, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 says, Therefore my people go into captivity to their enemies without knowing it, and because they have no knowledge of God. And their honorable men, their glory, are famished, and their common people are parched with thirst. Most of the things that happens to people now is because of lack of knowledge. And the essence of this video is to bring you into the understanding of a dimension of knowledge that will help you when you find yourself in need. Note this, the whole world was created by the power of God's word. The meaning of that is, the world was created after a pattern. I mean, the world have a code of operation. Just like when you don't have the password to a phone or a door, you won't be able to access it. In the same way, there is a pattern through which you can access things in this kingdom. And more so, there is a pattern that you can also access help from God. There is an understanding required for it all, and all this can be accessed in the Word of God, which is called the Bible. This is why Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 39, that search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And Paul the Apostle also in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, say that we should study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are many benefits to studying the Bible and using the appropriate word of the Bible to solve our needs. So today, I shall be sharing few of them with you, and I trust you'll be blessed. Ensure you use the appropriate passage for the exact thing you needed. Remember I told you, it's like a password, it must be used appropriately, and when using the word, use it with faith, because when you use the word of God, the circumstances do not see or hear you. The circumstances hear the word, or voice of God. So when you use the word of God, it is God talking through you to your challenges. And there is no challenge that can stand before the word of God. Let's see what King David says about this in Psalms 29. You divine beings, give to the Lord. Give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. The Lord's voice is over the waters. The glorious God thunders. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon jump around like a young bull, makes Syrian jump around like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, strips the forest bare. But in his temple, everyone shouts, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the floodwaters. The Lord sits enthroned king forever. Let the Lord give strength to his people. Let the Lord bless his people with peace. You can see how David described the voice of God. 
And when you use the words of God correctly with faith, your voice becomes his voice. That means everything will summit to you. Say Amen. Now let's go into the main reason for this video now. Today I shall be sharing only seven out of it. I trust in God that next time I shall complete it. Seven. Passages to find help from the Bible in times of need. Number one, Psalms 51. The worst thing the devil does to a man is to cause him to run away from God when he falls into sin. By these the devil will bring upon you guilty conscience or the guilt, the past sins you have committed. By this he will keep you under his power. When some people find themselves in this point, they become discouraged about life and some even commit suicide because they feel they can't help themselves again. But the Bible told us what to do when we fall into sin. Psalms 51 is a psalm that is meant for those who fall short of God's glory by committing sin. When you use Psalm 51 to pray, God forgives you immediately. Reason being that Psalms 51 is a prayer of sincere repentance and brokenness to God. And God does not reject the prayer of brokenness, for he is close to those who are brokenhearted. Watch how David puts it. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak your sentence and faultless in your judgment. I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. In sin my mother conceived me, and from my beginning I too was sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part of my heart you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted and return to you. Rescue me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. O Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice or else I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent, so such, O oh God, you will not despise. Instead of you running from God when you mistakenly committed sin, it's better you come to God in sincere repentance and ensure you do it from your heart. But please that I say, this passage is for help to those seeking forgiveness does not give you the guarantee to start committing sin. No, please. The Bible says, must we continue in sin that grace should abound? God forbid. But if you mistakenly fall into any sin, please use this psalm and pray for forgiveness. And for those of you that the devil is already lying to, that your sins are too big and cannot be forgiven. Don't believe the lie of the devil. Use this place to pray and watch yourself being forgiven. Remember that God loves you so much and he is ever willing to forgive you all your sins and more so. Watch my video on Just Let Go. How to overcome past sins and the devil. It will help you greatly. Number two, when you are sick and you need healing, pray using Isaiah 53 and Psalms 41. Psalm puts it like this, if someone is kind to poor people, God blesses him. When he is in trouble, the Lord rescues him. The Lord keeps him safe. The Lord saves his life. God causes him to be happy here in the land where he lives. The Lord will not put him under the power of his enemies. The Lord takes care of him when he is ill in bed. Whenever he is ill, you will make him completely well again. I said, oh, be kind to me and forgive me. 
I've done wrong things against you, but please make me well again. My enemies say cruel things about me. They say surely he must die soon. Then everyone will forget about him. When they come to see me, they say that they are my friends, but they think of ways to make me ashamed. When they leave, they tell everyone bad things about me. All the people who hate me insult me to other people. My enemies make plans to hurt me. They say he has a dangerous disease. He will never get up from his bed. Even my special friend has turned against me. He was someone that I trusted. I often ate food with him in my home. But you, Lord, please be kind to me. Raise me up to be well again. Then I can punish my enemies as they have punished me. This is a wonderful passage. In addition to that, you must always remember that Jesus has paid all the price for our diseases. So when the sickness comes, you clearly tell that devil that Jesus has paid it all. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, But it was our sins that caused his wounds. The bad things that we had done crushed him. The punishment that he received has brought peace to us. The wounds that he received have made us well. Having the understanding of what Jesus has done, it's time we receive our healing because it is already paid for. So when you pray using this, number one, you are reminding God of what he has done and telling him to perfect upon you. And secondly, you are telling the devil responsible for sickness to let go of you because he has no claim over your life and body and he has no choice than to leave you immediately. Glory to God. Number three, when in need of protection, pray using Psalms 91. We are currently in a state where many things are happening. Wars, crises, natural disasters, economical meltdown, political instability, famines, incurable diseases, and many more. If there must be one thing that we need greatly now, it is the protection from God. Because as it is now, nothing can help again except God. And the main passage for accessing protection from God is Psalms 91. It reads, If anyone lives in Almighty God's safe place, the Most High God protects that person. I will say to the Lord, You are the strong place where I will be safe. You are my God, and I trust in You. God will keep you safe so that no trap will catch you. He will not let any illness kill you. He will keep you safe like a bird keeps its babies safe under its wing. Because he keeps his promises, he will keep you safe like a shield and armor. Do not be afraid of troubles that come in the night or of your enemy's arrows during the day. Do not be afraid of any illness that comes when it is dark or any trouble that comes in the middle of the day. A thousand people may die near you, even ten thousand people may die at your side. But nothing will hurt you. Your own eyes will see this happen. You will see wicked people receive the punishment that they deserve. You have come to the Lord to make you safe. The Most High God has become your home. No bad thing will happen to you. No illness will come to your home. For God will tell His angels to keep you safe. They will protect you wherever you go. They will hold you safely in their hands so that you do not hurt your foot on a stone. You will win against lions and snakes. You will walk over them. The Lord says, If someone loves me, I will keep him safe. Because he worships me, I will protect him. When he calls to me for help, I will answer him. When he has trouble, I will be with him. I will rescue him and people will respect him. I will give to him a long life so that he is happy. He will see that I have the power to save people. Ensure you pray with it when you are surrounded by things that makes you scared. But don't forget to note that this protection are for those who are in His presence. So ensure that you dwell with Him. And an unholy person cannot dwell in the place where God is. So make sure you live a holy life. May God give you the grace to stay holy in Jesus' name. Number 4. When you're in lack or in need of financial help, pray with Philippians chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. When praying this, you should pray with the understanding that your Father have everything in stock for you, and you are going to receive what He has planned and packaged for you. My Lord God in heaven has plenty of good and valuable things. As you belong to Christ Jesus, God will give to you everything that you need. Our Father God is very great. It is right that everyone should praise Him always and forever. Amen. This is true. And it is the will is the Father 
that we should all prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Third John verse 2. So always pray to God with these verses and watch God answer all your prayers. Number five, when in danger or when calamities befalls you, pray using Psalm 40. I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and of destruction, out of the miry clay froth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear there in worship, and put their trust and confident reliance in the Lord. Blessed is happy, fortunate to be envied, is the man who makes the Lord his refuge and trust, and turns not to the proud or to followers of false gods. Number six, when in need of encounter from God, pray with John chapter 14, verse 20 to 21. It says, at that time, when that day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. The first secret in getting an encounter from God is your genuine love for him. With that, you can now pray using this passage. More so Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 to 13. Then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29 to 30. Number 7. Prayer for protection when you are about traveling or going on an errand. Pray using Psalm 1 to 1. This prayer is an acknowledgement of God's power to protect and to keep you safe from every evil. The prayer proves your total surrender to God's power and governance over your life. And remember that when God is in charge over any life, there is no evil that can befall such a one. Anytime you meet God and you say, Lord, I am nothing without you. I look to you in everything I do, as long as you acknowledge God in this way. God comes in his jealousy to defend you. So this is a powerful way of provoking the jealousy of God over your life. Listen to how the Bible states it. Psalm 121. As I travel, I look up towards the hills. I will find no help there. My help comes from the Lord. He made the heaven and the earth. He will take care of you so that you do not fall. The one who keeps you safe will not sleep. Yes, the Lord keeps Israel's people safe. He never gets tired or sleeps at all. The Lord is the one who keeps you safe. He is very near to you. He will give you shade from the hot sun. The hot sun will not hurt you in the daytime. At night, the moon cannot hurt you. The Lord is the one who takes care of you in all danger. He keeps your life safe. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, It is the same when I give my word to people. It will not return to me without any result. No, my word does what I want it to do. What I promise to do will certainly happen. You can see that God said that his word will never return to him void without performing the reason to which it was created. And if you pray using the words of God, it means you are sending the word of God. So be sure of this, that those words you sent will never return back to you void without the answer to it. What a powerful passage is this. So for every right prayer we'll pray, with the word of God the answer is sure. Do you believe this? If yes, then why don't you give it a trial now? Just pick one of these passages given here and pray to the Father and watch how God answers you. But remember that the best thing that is required is the ability to love God. The greatest prayer of all is the fellowship with the Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace, favor, and spiritual blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence and fellowship, the communion and sharing together and participation in the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen, so be it. I will not mention the remaining five passages in this video again, but I trust to do that again very soon. But for the main time, Always commit your all to God in every problem you find yourself. Use the right passage to pray.
look at what wrong prayer can cause to a man. Many, if I show you this, you will be more serious in using the Bible to pray. James chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. See how easy to read version outs it. You want to have something for yourself, but you do not get what you want. You then kill other people. You try to take things that are not yours, but you cannot get them. So you fight and you quarrel with each other, but you do not have these things because you do not ask God for them. Even when you do ask God, you do not receive anything. That is because you ask for the wrong reason. You just want to use these things to make yourselves happy. Learn how to ask well. Most of the times people complain that God does not answer prayers, but it's not like God does not answer prayers, it's because we pray amiss. One of the best prayer to pray is praying the will of the Father or praying the word of God, which is the Bible. I advise you to start it immediately. Now let me pray for you. Father Lord, I thank you for everyone listening to this now. I thank you for the gift of life and protection. Thank you for everything you have done for us in Jesus' name. Father, according to your words and promises in Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 10, which says, the rain and the snow come down from the sky, and they do not immediately return there. Instead, they give water to the earth so that crops will grow there. Then the farmer has seeds to plant, and people have food to eat. It is the same when I give my word to people. It will not return to me without any result. No, my word does what I want it to do. What I promise to do will certainly happen. You will leave that foreign land with joy. You will travel home with peace in your minds. The mountains and the hills will sing with joy as you travel past. The trees in the fields will clap their hands together. Where thorn bushes have been growing, pine trees will grow instead. Myrtle bushes will grow where there are weeds now. Those things will show everyone that the Lord is great. It will be a sign to people forever. So I declare that all the above promises be made manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. I pray that you receive grace to pray and the grace to stay holy unto the Lord in Jesus. By the power of the word of God, I release healing upon all those sick in Jesus' powerful name, those who need children. The barren ones, O oh God, I pray that you visit them. For the Bible says in Exodus chapter 23, verse 26, that there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. So I ask that your word pertaining them come to pass now. For heaven and earth will pass away, but your words abides forever. Therefore I declare that all your promises in the Bible for us come to pass now in Jesus' name. For we know that you will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think about according to your power at work in us. And by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in me, I release miracles of every kind on them now in Jesus' name. All your problems ends now. The Lord come to your aid and settle you on every side. In Jesus' powerful name I have prayed. Amen. Shout aloud amen seven times wherever you are. Thank you for watching this video. I trust you are blessed. Don't just be blessed alone. Share the video with your friends and family all over. You can also leave a comment below at the comments box. And if you need special counsel or prayers, you can also comment below then we can meet and talk over that. More so, you can choose to join our family by subscribing to this channel in order to stay updated when videos like this is out. God bless you. Shalom.